welcome everyone and thank you for being here as we celebrate the final mass at Nash Coral. Uh, next time we are together, we will be in a little place that is a chapel that I built and it's called Stone Chapel. So we'll celebrate today, enjoy today, and look forward to having you with us again uh, next week. <clears throat> Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and Amen. on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, Lord, in your great love, answer me, answer me. Lord, in your great love, Lord, in your great love, answer me, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme, you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, Lord, in your great love, 
Answer me, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, Lord, in your great love, answer me, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own were in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, Lord, in your great love, answer me, answer me. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, when the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. But I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. It's always interesting what people are afraid of. You know, some people are afraid of snakes, some people are afraid of spiders, and some people are afraid of mice. We could reflect on that gospel today, and our Lord is instructing his disciples, and right away comes out very strong. I know when I was preparing this sermon, just those words that were right at the start caught my attention, and they're very bold words. Fear not. And then he goes on to say, what 
I want you to do is I want you to take my message out to the world and I want you to shout it from the rooftops. You know, don't whisper it, but shout it. And fear not, you know, I will be with you. We could ask ourselves, what is it that we fear? And I think we might reflect on the idea that sometimes we fear other people. You know, we look at their size, maybe like Sleeveless Bob, they're just big and muscular. And you say, I'm not gonna get in a fight with that guy ever period. Or, you know, maybe it's the fact that they have a position of authority and or a position of power and we're afraid of that. But in the gospel today, you know, our Lord is saying, don't fear those that can kill the body and not the soul, but fear those who can send both body and soul to hell. And then he goes on to say, once again, as I said, make sure that you are spreading the message, that you are spreading God's word. Shout it from the rooftops. We can think of another thing that we perhaps fear, and that is loss. When we think of those disciples, I think what the Lord was seeing in the future was that the Pharisees, when they tried to come to the synagogue and talk about Christ, the Pharisees were going to throw them out. You know, they weren't going to have anyone preaching about faith in Christ. And you know, that meant a tremendous loss for the disciples, you know, to lose their position in the synagogue, you know, not to be seen as leaders anymore or not to have a place of prominence anymore. You know, it was more than just being ignored, but it was becoming an outcast. And that was the loss you know, that the disciples felt. Another thing that we could, when we reflect on fears, is that we could reflect on the fear of the uncertainty of the future. You know, it probably affects all of us at one time or another. There's, you know, the worry is the monster that has a name tag, and that name tag says, what if? What if this happens? And then we begin to worry that it might happen. And it causes anxiety, and it perhaps causes sleepless nights. But what we could think about is this, that when Moses and when Joshua were leading the people out of Egypt, one of the things that the people said, why did you bring us out here? You know, what was it that, why do we have to be here where we have nothing really to eat? But our Lord was with them all the time. We can ask ourselves, how do we calm our fears? You know, how can we get rid of our fears? And perhaps one of the ways is just simply by being courageous. You know, Moses and Joshua had to be courageous when they were leading those people out of Egypt. You know, and for us too, you know, there's times when we have to be courageous. But, <clears throat> Eddie Rickenbacker once said this, that you can't have courage unless you have fear. You, you have to have something that you're afraid of if you want to be a courageous person. And maybe that's a good thing to, for us to think about, that when we have fears, then we're also going to be able to practice the idea of being a courageous person. We could also reflect on the idea of having a fear of God. And when we think about a fear of God, what we want is a healthy fear of God. You know, there's, there are people who just think of hell and damnation. 
But we want our fear to be a fear that is a healthy fear of God. In Jeremiah, the prophet, you know, there's the words of our Lord and that says this, I put fear in your hearts so that you will not drift away from me. Another thing that we could reflect on is the idea when we're afraid is that idea of trusting God. You know, we can't see God physically, but we have to trust that he is there. You know, when ancient Native Americans were bringing up their boys, they would teach them about how to use a bow and arrow, they would teach them how to fish, you know, and you know, they would teach them you know, how you know, to scout and do things like that. But when that Native American boy turned 13, one of the things that they did was they would take him out at night and they would put him in just the middle of a forest, or at least it looked like the middle of a forest. And then they would leave him all alone, all alone to hear all of those scary sounds of the night. And every snap of a twig might be some creature that was coming to eat him. And then after what seemed like an eternity, the sun began to rise. And as the sun began to rise, you know, that 13-year-old would begin to look around. And he would see flowers, he would see trees, and then he would notice that there was a path. And not far up that path was his dad, standing with a bow and arrow. You know, he had been there all along to protect that son. And for us too, you know, we can't see Christ physically, but we have to believe you know, that he is there and he always is there for us. We can think of a phrase that comes out of Psalm 34. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Let us seek the Lord today so that we too may be delivered from all our fears. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christians pray that the gifts and the Mass that we offer <clears throat> may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your bountiless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with everybody. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. For the final time from St. James in his court.